Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's, I'm pleased to be here among so many familiar faces from different fields of the NGO activities which I've met during, during many years. Actually, you never remember with how many NGOs you are involved until you become a minister and, and you, had, you have actually to quit from all those NGOs because you, you come then incompetent to give any financial support or any other support if you are still involved in those. And uh, when you made the list of all those NGOs you have been involved recently, it's quite a long list usually. And I'm not the only minister, I think, who made this remark. It's WWF and it's the plan and it's the Finnish Russia Society and, and so on. And uh, as a minister, you, you, you have to then make the distance from your NGO background. And then after, after this longer or shorter period, you then jump back to your normal activities, which I, I think all of us uh, have. We are meeting here in Helsinki at a very crucial time when, when the world is preparing for the post-2015 uh, uh, challenges. Uh, we have been living now the last 15 years with the Millennium Development Goals. Now we are heading towards, hopefully, uh, sustainable development goals for the uh, coming years. We are also in the, in the it's, it's also interlinked to the Rio plus 20 process, it's interlinked to the climate process, and of course, not only development-wise, but, but looking also from the uh, environment point of view, this will be a very, very crucial process. We have been, from Finnish side, uh, very active, actually, uh, both on thematical issues, looking what should be the challenges in the post-2015 world. Of course, our usual turf is the women and, and, and girls and the education and the environment. But we are also looking now issues like democracy, fragile states, peace and security. What are those topics that should be now really raised to the agenda of the international uh, community? I met with the World Bank leader and we discussed quite a lot about the education, what would be actually the goal in, in education in the post-2015 uh, goal setting. And uh, he had a very interesting remark. He said, well, he said that Finland is doing quite well in this PISA survey, as you know. And I said, well, but countries like South Korea is doing also quite well, even better than Finland. But his remark was, yes, but the children in South Korea go to school at 7 o'clock in the morning and leave the school around 11 in the night. And he has heard that your kids are starting to school at 8 o'clock in the morning and leaving at 2 at the afternoon. So the effectiveness of education is also a topic, actually. How much free time there is for the children, how much time for their hobbies, how much time for sports, how much time for computer games. I, I know that all the Finnish kids are loving that. And we have actually in Finland a phenomenon now that the boys, usually the girls are always better in everything, I have to say. But now the boys suddenly are getting better in the English language. And people are asking, why is this? That that's, of course, because of the computer games, which they are using most of the time, even sometimes more than with the, with the schooling. And I, I, I think we are living in, a, in very many ways in a, in a new society also uh, uh, on, on educational issues. And I, I, I think it's a very good debate. What can we do more? I was just uh, returning from Tanzania and Ethiopia, where actually they were very proud that 95% uh, uh, of the seven-year-old children are starting to school. But then there was a problem. All of them do not learn to write, to read, uh, to mathematics and into mathematics and, and, and so on because of the lack of the good teachers, because the lack of the quality in the, in the schools. And I, I think now the quality questions are coming very essential and we have to have in the post-2015 process also uh, uh, tools to measure the, the achievements even, even more strict that what, what we have in the, with the uh, Millennium Development Goals. And I think this is a very, very key issue, the overall setting of these goals where the non-governmental organizations have a crucial role uh, in advocacy, in, in raising up the topics, in, in actually linking with each others like you are doing here today and, 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 and discussing how do we get the, the uh, good and measurable goals for post-2015 uh, process. Then I've taken another perspective, which is linked to the human rights, the, the democracy issue. Long, long time ago, when, was, when I was last time minister, uh, we planned a tri trip to Turkmenistan. And of course, my question as an environmentalist, I, my first question to my staff was that uh, 
Can we meet the environmental NGOs in Turkmenistan? And then, of course, my staff and the foreign ministry tried to find out and said, well, uh, they are not allowed to exist. This was something 97 or whatever was the year. Um, and I said, well, could we still meet them, you know, even if they are illegal? And then we pushed a little bit and, and we also indicated that actually from our ministry we would be ready to support the environmental club Katena, which was that those days illegal in Turkmenistan. And we pushed the process in the way that during my visit I had the possibility to, to visit the uh, environmental club Katena, but also the same day their minister made these organizations legal. So then I had the opportunity in the, in the evening reception to introduce to the minister their own NGOs, that here is the minister, here is the illegal, formerly illegal environmental club. And, and so and actually you can do quite a lot on these issues. When I met with the uh, 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 environmental activists in Pakistan asked, uh, what, what is the main problem with the environmental activism in Pakistan? They said exactly it's, it's a threat actually for your life in, in some cases, for your personal health, of, of, of raising up some very sensitive issues. So it's very much a human rights question. It's the freedom of speech question to, to work as an NGO in, in, in some of these countries. And I think this is our uh, common goal, of course, to, to fight for the rights of people for expression of their opinions, freedom of speech, and, and so very, very crucial and, and basic issue for uh, non-governmental organizations. I have been traveling with our Speaker of Finnish Parliament, uh, uh, Mr. Heinaluoma, in some of the Western African countries, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and when, while I'm always meeting the environmentalists, he is always meeting with the labor movement, and I have been sometimes joining, he's coming from the Social Democrats, I'm sometimes joining these labor movement meetings, and actually I found that very, very same issues are there. Freedom of speech, freedom, freedom of, of uh, getting together, freedom of having your meetings, and, and freedom of, of influencing to the society. And I, I think it's, uh, it's a very wide spectrum, of course, non-governmental organizations that there exist in this world, and we have to give the possibilities of, of uh, all of them. Maybe then about the word about the, the Finnish support to the non-governmental non sector, particularly as part of our development cooperation, which I'm responsible for. We have currently, uh, we are using, I think, a uh, little bit more than 100 uh, uh, million euros for our NGOs yearly in development cooperation. Somebody told me that it's around 13% of all our development budget that we are using for our domestic non-governmental organizations, and additionally, we are using something uh, like 20 million euros for the international non-governmental organizations. And actually, just yesterday, we had a debate for this year, what would be our criteria to support the international non-governmental organizations, and we are very much looking, actually, the, the post-2015 process that we would love to encourage international non-governmental organizations to be more active in the post-2015 uh, pro uh, goals and, and, and also maybe ready to, to uh, fund from the Finnish side some of these activities particularly. Uh, of course, we have still the self-financing part uh, in, in our non-governmental organization. We are asking 5 to 15 percent for self-financing. The rest, the state is paying, paying and, uh, and, and in this self-financing you can count actually your own work as, as well, so it, it doesn't always have to be money money or, or other fundraising, but it can also be, be work. So we, we, we think that we, have a, we are doing well with our NGO society in, in the development cooperation. And actually, whenever I'm going to the parliament, the parliament is always thinking that the NGO side is much more effective than the state or, or even the UN organizations and so on. So they always praise actually that part of the development cooperation which we are doing uh, through the non-governmental organizations. If I then just uh, in the end mention some of the sectors that, that we are active, of course the peace and security is always there. You know that uh, our former president Ahtisari has established this crisis management initiative. I, I think tomorrow you will learn something more about it, but that's a good example actually of the non-governmental organization doing the very, very hard business in the, in the world for the peace and, and, and security, and, and they are not the only one. We have the Finn Church Aid and, and some other organizations actually doing this work. And I have been very, very impressed of the role of our di diaspora, including our Somalis, people from Burma, 
the Sri Lanka Tamilis, uh, whoever uh, actually working for their own country and working in the, in the peace processes of their own country. The Somali, our Somali community is particularly close to my heart because they have been coming and going in first in, in Hargeisa, now more and more to in Mogadishu, and, and whenever, actually when we last time visited our foreign minister Mogadishu, the first guy to greet us with a clear Finnish language, of course, was a guy who is actually a, a, a councillor in, in Espo, the, the community next to Helsinki, but he was also visiting Mogadishu, and we, when we went, went there on, we, we found quite many Finnish-speaking Somalis actually nowadays working for the Somalian government, and uh, it's, for me it sounded a little bit like a mini Finland. They said that they would like to establish sauna here in Mogadishu very soon, and some kind of Finnish Finnish club and, and, and so on. So it's, uh, it was, it's, it's, it's very interesting phenomena when you have, we have 15,000 Somalis in Finland and, and, and doing very actively now the, the reconstruction work in, in, in Somalia. And many of our non-governmental organizations are using their competence and their skills for this reconstruction purposes. I think it's an excellent issue. The other sector that always impresses me is our uh, organizations working for women and girls. I've been working very closely with uh, this kind of Finnish initiative, Women's Bank, which is uh, this kind of uh, gra grassroots funding or, or small, more small funding initiative to support women, women with the sewing machine or, or putting up a small kiosk or shop and, and so on in many African countries and, and so on. And, and it's, it's interesting particularly because those NGO activists from the Finnish side are very often the business women who know very well how to establish an organization, how to establish a company, what to do, how to support the enterprises and, and so on. And they are uh, giving also not only the money but their competence to these uh, ladies who are interested in the entrepreneurship and, and, uh, and, financing or, and, 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 and finding financing for their activities. Human development, education, youth, I already mentioned that of course when we are particularly look at the Horn of Africa area we discuss now in, in Europe very much about the refugees coming to Europe, the, the immigration coming to Europe. I had just hosting some days ago in, in Finland a uh, uh, government of Eritrea representatives. And I have to say that we have a uh, quite we had quite tough discussion on the on the issue of uh, government or country neglecting its youth in the way that unfortunately is happening now in, in the Horn of Africa and, and, and for example in the case of Eritrea, young people walking over the border to Sudan, then being a victims of human trafficking, we have heard terrible stories from, from Sinai, or people coming through, through Libya then trying to reach Europe and we saw the Lampedusa uh, accident this, this autumn. What can we do? You know, and, and we, we from the Finland we are pushing for creative solutions, we are linking them to our educational institutions, we are linking them to our internet people, angry birds, whoever can help in this situation actually try to look how to uh, get skills to your younger generation, how to make a society, democratic open society where there is room also for your younger generation. I think uh, we have many countries uh, and areas where this challenge is particularly a uh, big one. Our planet issues, the environmental issues are already mentioned. This is something that is very in, in our scope. Of course, the climate issue very much today. And I'm very happy to see that my good partner from the WWF, Lisa Robeder, will tomorrow will also be uh, with, with you here. The democracy topic is very much there. Actually, our political parties have established this kind of joint uh, effort demo to, to support democracy and, and, and political development in, in countries. And I'm, I'm always actually quite happy that it's, we didn't organize our work in the way that each political party have their own foundation for, for democracy and, and, and development cooperation, but they have joined together. They have won. And, and that maybe shows also actually in many countries that the political cooperation over the body borders is, is possible and you can do something together. And, and I think it's, it's one part of the democracy building that you have to, in some cases, you have to find consensus over the political uh, borders and, and, and limits. And then, of course, maybe last but not least to mention our activity with the disability, uh, people with disabilities and, and the handicap movement. I have been learning myself a lot from the Finnish handicap movement, which has been a self-organizing movement who said nobody else can speak for us than ourselves. 
and, and they have now established in many countries uh, their own, own development cooperation and, and with the handicap movements in, in these countries and, and, and really pushing also the foreign ministry very hard on, on, on these issues. Let the handicap people themselves organize also part of this work and this is what we are doing. Many years ago we established three foundations in Finland, one for human rights called KIOS, one for uh, uh, environment called uh, CMMPU, one for the handicapped people called ABILIS. And this has been quite successful concept that actually we are funding these foundations and these foundations are making their own decisions what kind of cooperation they are doing with the non-governmental organizations in, 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 in countries in the world. The initiative actually for this came many years ago from the issue that we, our NGOs were cooperating with uh, some environmental NGOs that were very critical to the Finnish forest industry in a country X. And then I think the foreign minister get a lot of headache. Can we support an NGO that is critical to our own companies or our own business somewhere or, or raising these issues up? And the creative solutions that we found is, is was to separate actually the funding in the way that it's not the foreign minister who is giving the support, it's this kind of independent foundation who is working for the environment or working for the human rights or working for the, for the handicapped people's rights. And I, I, I think also that has, has been a, a successful concept because then uh, foreign ministry do not have to know always what the Finnish non-governmental uh, organizations are planning, what are their goals and, and, and so on. You, you don't have to control, you have to support this arena. I wish you a very good conference and, and I'm so glad to see all of you here in Helsinki today. Thank you.